All right, this is fourth grade, module five, lesson 13. And in this lesson, we're going to continue what we did in lesson 12, only now we're going to be comparing fractions using benchmarks still. But now the, uh, we're including fractions between one and two. So now we have some new uh, benchmarks. One, slightly greater than one. Then we have one and a half, and we have two. So we've kind of expanded our repertoire for our fourth graders. Uh, so let's get started on that. So what's really cool about this lesson is even though we're using benchmarks, um, we're also kind of reinforcing how students can take a fraction that is clearly larger than one, and we know it's larger than one because the numerator is larger than the denominator, and their students are going to practice turning that into a mixed number. For example, in this case, uh, nine-fifths, we could think of it as five-fifths plus four-fifths, which is one and four-fifths, all right? So now we know that nine-fifths is equal to one and four-fifths. And so that's kind of, a, kind of a cool little thing that we're going to be doing. Whoa! Kind of a cool little thing that we're going to be doing here is also practicing how to turn impropers into mixeds. The other thing is, uh, personally for me as a teacher, um, I think this lesson shortchanges our students because it only gives the number line from one to two. I think we need to continue to remember that, well, wait a second, we also had benchmarks from zero to one, so let's not forget that. So if I were teaching this lesson, in which case I kind of am because I'm making the video here, I would extend my number line for this lesson like this. So I really would not use this number line. Instead, I would use this number line right here because I don't want my students to ever forget about these numbers down here. So now I'm going to think about this. So I already did nine-fifths, it's right down here. So nine-fifths is one and four-fifths. Well, we, we know that half of five is two-fifths, right? I mean, two-and-a-half, 2.5. So that is equal to one-and-a-half, right? So we know that one and four-fifths is larger than one-and-a-half. So we know this one and four fifths has to live somewhere over here and four is really close to five so that tells me one and four fifths is really close to two so that tells me nine fifths is really close to two where does it live i don't know uh exactly but i know i'm going to put it somewhere close to two so i'm done with Let's see, I'm done with nine-fifths. So now, oh, let's do three-halves here. So we've got three-halves. And so three-halves is two-halves plus one-half. Hey, that's exactly one-and-a-half. So that's easy. That tells me that three-halves lives right here. It doesn't get any easier than that. And that three halves goes right there. And then, so we're done with that one. And now we have 14 tenths. So I'm going to squeeze in 14 tenths um, right here. So 14 tenths, that's 10 tenths plus 4 tenths, which is equal to 1 and 4 whoa, tenths. All right, so 1 and four tenths. Let's see if I can move some of this stuff aside here. So we have one and four tenths. Now one and four tenths, that's slightly less than one and a half because five tenths is a half. So we know that 14 tenths has to be slightly less than one and a half. Where exactly should it go? It doesn't matter. But now that we have our, our general placements based on our benchmarks of these fractions, we can now compare them. Because remember, fractions to the right are larger than fractions to the left. More of the same, 
only they're kind of removing some of the scaffolding and they want us to do the comparison ourselves, but, uh, or no, they're telling us specifically to compare these two fractions, which are kind of tricky. And again, I prefer not to use this kind of number line. I prefer to squeeze in the number line from zero to two because I don't want my students to forget about the numbers from zero to one. So here's my number line that I would use. And if I were to do 12 twelfths, I mean 12 ninths, I'd say, well, that's nine ninths plus three ninths. So that's one and three ninths. So I know that's going to be larger than one and half of nine is 4.5 or four and a half. So this is really kind of, if you think about it, it's kind of close to, so 12 ninths is close to one and a half, but it's gotta be less than one and a half. So I'd put it right around there. And then, so that's, let's see, that's 12 ninths. And let's just jump straight to, um, 18 fifteenths, because that's what we're supposed to compare. So let's do 18 fifteenths. So 18 fifteenths, I'm going to think of that as 15 fifteenths plus 3 fifteenths. So that's really 1 and 3 fifteenths. So if you think about it, 1 and 3 fifteenths, it's clearly going to be larger than 1, so it's going to be over here somewhere. But 3 out of 15 is barely anything. So that's really barely over one hole. It's barely over one hole. So I'm going to put it over here rather than kind of close to a half, one and a half. I'm going to kind of keep it over here. And that immediately allows us to compare 12 ninths and 18 fifteenths because we can see that 12 ninths is larger than 18 fifteenths because 12 ninths is to the right of 18 fifteenths on the number line. Lastly, it's just more of the same. Uh, parents and teachers use, um, let your students use a number line. And in this case, you really do have to start at zero and go all the way up to two because some of these fractions are less than one. So you are going to want to use this number line down here if students want to um, use a number line as their explanation. And then the idea is just start comparing, I mentally imagining where these fractions are going to live on the number line. And whatever number is on the right of the numbers on the left, the fractions on the right are larger than the fractions on the left. Um, some obvious ones that are really a new kind of technique that we can use is greater than or less than one. For example, right here, we know that six-fourths is bigger than one, and then seven-eighths is less than one, so that automatically tells us that six-fourths is larger than seven-eighths, and we can use that same argument down here on F. 3 halves is larger than 1. 8 ninths is less than 1. So that means we know 3 halves is larger than 8 ninths. And that's not to say we're going to forget all the other techniques we learned on the previous slide, um, but that's a new technique that we get to use. And that wraps up fourth grade module five lesson 13 now we're comparing we're able to compare any fractions from zero all the way up to two